Okay, so we gave up on this floor pan because you try to grind the weld back down smooth, um, you find a lot of pinholes and then you start to get the metal really thin and you burn through. So we are gonna give up on that for now and fit the floor pan, or fit the uh, front rails, the, the frame rails, because we can come back to this and do this while the frame rails are in there. But we don't have a lot of time, so we need to get this these frame rails in. There's one here, one there. We're gonna get them fitted up tonight to the car. We're gonna get the surfaces underneath ready for them and um, get the measurements done that we need to start welding them in. Here we are just getting the floor pan uh, prepared for the fitment of the frame rail on that passenger side. We did weld up some of the holes that were uh, put into the floor pan when we drilled out the spot welds that the original frame rail had in them that go to the floor pan. And you know, you try not to drill through the floor pan, but sometimes you just do when you're drilling off uh, the original pieces. So we're just grinding that smooth, making sure everything's sanded real good and smooth. And then we'll put some weld through primer on that, which you can see in other parts of the car here is the gold paint. And then my brother is under there welding up a couple pinholes in a butt weld that I did on a patch. There's a little filler panel that goes from the inner rocker on that passenger side and goes to the outer edge of that frame rail. And he is just finishing a couple pinhole weld ups there and uh, is going to grind that smooth. It's easier to do without the frame rail in there. Yeah, we're on there. Just, uh, change it. Yeah. Okay, while well, he's on the top, I'm gonna try to take care of some of this stuff right here. This weld slag and that crap that somebody left there too with the Dremel. And on this side, we're also going to grind down that weld seam. It's a butt weld seam that the uh, <clears throat> restoration shop patched this uh, floor pan and caused a little bit of some like warpage and not really a good seam here. Um, it's the it's the side closest to the rocker panel right there. And on the last video, you saw the top side of it and how we struggled up there. Um, we end up in a later video actually cutting this out and putting a patch in right there because it's just way easier and ends up better. But when we get all said and done with the grinding here, we're going to also put the weld through primer on the floor pan and get that ready for frame rail fitment and weld them. So tonight we're trying to get these rails ready to weld in. We're just trying to finalize the metalwork on these frame rails and get them ready for fitment onto the car. They don't really need a lot, but they do require some hours of, of work here. These are OEM frame rails. They're off of another car. Our father had the foresight to pick up these parts along the way over the years, collect them, um, and get them ready to put on this car when it came time. Luckily, um, these are off of uh, another e-body and he found them at you know swap meets and car shows and they're really clean uh, they've been sandblasted as you can see in epoxy primed but they do need some work on the flanges um, where they are drilled off of the car like these cars are all held together unibody cars they're held together by spot welds all over the place including on these frame rails and when people drill them off of another car they're usually pretty careful but you know they're not perfect there are extra holes sometimes and there are um, spots where the holes go off the edge of the flange and cut the edge of the flange right off. So we're going to weld them up and we want to make these look factory like we've never been there before. Other than maybe the spot welds themselves, we can't really perfectly replicate those, but we can get pretty close, make them look nice. But we want to make it look like these haven't been touched before.
you'll see us put a lot of effort into this end of the frame rail. It's the part that meets up to the torsion bar cross member, so it's very important to have everything true and flat here. But we're also making sure that we don't have any extra holes. I know that this had extra holes in it on this end where the flanges go to the cross member, and we had to weld some up. And we want the flanges to look like we've never touched them before. We want them straight, true, and looking OEM. And I know that when they were removed from the original car, that people used a chisel, which is common to break the spot welds the rest of the way off. Sometimes you you drill them out and you don't get the you get like three quarters of the spot weld drilled through, and you have a little piece hanging on. So if you just use a chisel, it's easy to help break that free. And that's common in these types of situations and parts. So when you buy a part from a car that's a used part, um, OEM, you'll have that. But we're trying to weld up. You see this edge right here? We're welding along that edge because a chisel dented it in and made it look not straight anymore across the horizon of that flange. So we're just adding weld where we need to, and then we're going to grind it down and grind the three sides down so it's square and looks original again. I know that's like kind of a little extra, a little too much but it's just a much cleaner look. So you see us cooling the welds down on this flange. It's pretty thick metal. You probably don't necessarily need to cool it down like we are, but we're just being extra precautionary to not warp anything. And we're trying to maybe speed up the process a little bit so we can add weld to the, the next hole quicker than if we didn't cool it down like that. Um, and it seems to work well with that copper. We put the copper in there and you can really fill a hole nice. The weld does not stick to the copper. And we just made that out of a piece of, I don't know, half inch copper pipe that was laying out. We just hammered it flat and we've got a nice little bar to hold uh, up against the, the, the hole when we need to weld, fill, fill in a hole like that. That's about a 3 8 size hole that, we, that are drilled into the flanges there. So this is the other side frame rail and that flange is not bent at the correct angle to meet the floor really well on that side. So here I am trying to uh, flatten that out and maybe use the crescent wrench just to give it a little extra push before I take the hammer and dolly and just really flatten it nice. And you got to be careful of doing this because you don't want to hammer that edge out like uh, tenderizing meat. It won't be crisp and sharp on the edges if you do that. Anywhere you do this on any metal. Now you have to be kind of careful, but that's pretty thick metal and it won't uh, hurt it too bad. You can hit it pretty good and not worry too much. There's my brother working on the radiator support that I bought on eBay. It's an e-body radiator support. I want an OEM one. We did purchase an AMD one and it just didn't look as good as a factory one would. On this frame rail too, I noticed that the cross member section, the torsion bar cross member, doesn't have holes in the flange, so we have to drill them on this one. Someone must have taken it out a different way by maybe drilling the spot welds out of the torsion bar cross member instead of on the frame rail itself. And yes, that is a Hellcat engine over there on the stand behind me. So this upper uh, flange right here where it meets the floorboard doesn't have um, holes in the right spot either for plug welding. So we're going to add a couple. But you can also see where we still need to fill a couple holes that are drilled a little off the edge of the flange. But we're so excited to get this on the car and test fit it that we go back and do that later. So right now we're just getting it ready to fit to the car um, and measure things. It's nice to be able to finally put these frame rails up on the car and fit them, measure them, after what seems like a real long process of 
preparing the frame rails and the floorboards. And uh, it's, it's just a light at the end of the tunnel moment for us. So we've got this chassis jig that we built and welded up, chassis table, whatever you want to call it. It's based on the factory service manual measurements. And the, the service manuals were really nice because they have pretty much every single measurement you need to do this. We found a few extra ones on the internet that were handy that the service manual didn't have. And they come in handy in at a future video, you'll see what, where something doesn't fit and we have to refer to those to figure it out. Um, but this chassis table is nice because we have it all marked out prior to this and the car has all these holes in the, that are built into the bottom of the frame rails and bottom of the body of the car that are reference points that you use for measuring everything. And we know this car is straight from the, the firewall back is, is perfect. We measured it, cross measured it, side to side measured it, up and down measured it. And there's a kind of a horizontal datum line you use to reference as well for measurements. We actually have this plumb bob hanging in one of those holes that I'm talking about in the front of this frame rail. It's dead center in the hole and that actually shows us where the center of that frame rail should be sitting in reference to our jig. And also the side to side measurement, the, the span between the two frame rails is also measured at this point. And we're just triple checking all of these measurements. Then we actually throw up this uh, driver's side frame rail on there in order to see how that measures out on the front of this chassis jig with another plumb bob. And we figure out, and we don't show up, we figure out something's wrong with our measurements on the jig itself. And we have to go back through and see what we did wrong and measure some stuff again. That's what we're figuring out here. We've got a printed uh, picture of the measurements for the factory uh, OEM service manual. And we're just kind of reviewing that. And then we're going to go over here. We're going to put the K member on. We're going to bolt that on and then try to put, put the thing in the frame rails in place and see where the plumb bobs lie then. And we see that they're off. They're actually off towards the passenger side a little bit because something we did where we put these the horizontal uh, tubes that are sticking out towards us, the square tubes, weren't welded in the exact position they needed to be. All the rest of the jig is perfect, but for some reason we screwed up these little upright, these little um, outriggers here, and the, the plumb bobs don't match up, so we have to readjust our marks on the, on the chassis jig, and then we're good. And you'll see in the next video we continue to measure, and we actually find something wrong after we tack the frame rails in. We have to grind them back off for a minute, readjust, put it back together, and everything measures and we actually put the sheet metal up and it all fits good. But you'll see that in the next video, so stay tuned.